morning. Um, just doing a bit of an experiment and got my helper behind the camera today. Thank you, Maya. Um, we've been looking on YouTube at all the different gardening channels, loving them by the way, people. Um, and we've come across the global box or global bucket style of gardening, which is like the earth box, just a modified DIY um, job. It comprises of two buckets. You have one is a reservoir with holes in it um, just to allow the overflow of any excess water and to show you when it's full and a top bucket which is a little bit more intricate it has a large hole to hold a cup a hole to hold a filling pipe and a series of holes that are there to allow um, air around the roots or the base of the plants I suppose or allow the roots to go through and find the water I've seen that in hydroponic setup many a time roots travelling down drain holes we have a pipe with a diagonal slice off the end just to allow the water into the reservoir down the bottom a cup people in videos use cup I just decided to use a little pot plant drilled some extra holes it sits in the hole in the bottom like so that actually then sits in the reservoir. Water comes in through the holes, wicks up through the medium that you have in there. There's a special way of installing that. I'll show you in the video later. And then through to the root zone of the plants. Now, the wicking bucket. There's two buckets. Um, the reason I use two buckets is because to buy a bucket this size to do this experiment, to make it e um, even, uh, would cost me $12. These two buckets together have cost me, hello, these two buckets together have cost me five dollars from reverse garbage so yeah I'm happy with that. Um, has a couple of holes in the side, two spots to hold the filling pipe in place. Um, the reservoir drainage holes are at the same height so they sh should both hold the same amount of um, water just to keep everything even and level in the experiment. Both pots are going to be planted with the same age Amish paste um, tomatoes we've grown from seed. Just to explain the reservoir in the Wicken bucket. Right, as you're watching me fondle the expanded clay balls, I'll just let you know that we decided against that for various reasons. And we're just using this sand. Um, so that will go into the reservoir of the Wicking bucket. I'm just putting the Wicking bucket together and just to show you what I've done in here if you can zoom in move um, I've put just a little bit of shade cloth that I use on the um, outlet pipes of the wicking beds and wicking barrel I've just uh, put that between the two buckets and pushed the sand up against it that'll just um, stop too much sand coming straight out so that's in just now to make it all nice and level it's giving me a good level um, now on top of that I like to put sugarcane mulch. Um, the reason I did it, I might have mentioned it before, is um, when working with the wicking beds and wicking barrels, um, sometimes you need to pull them apart uh, for whatever purpose, a ripped liner or you just want to change the makeup of the mix in it. If there's a layer of sugarcane mulch you can actually see when you've got down to the um, the reservoir medium, the medium that holds the water so you know not to dig any further, there's your reservoir you've got all the soil that you need out and you can do whatever and then fill it back into that level so that's just something I like to do, other people use shade cloth, um, fly screen I just like to use this so right and we're about to put the soil mix in which if you'd like to come this way is a mixture of our compost our horse manure compost that's been through the worm farm about 250 mils or a cup of blood and bone the same of um, cracker dust and I'm about to put in the coconut fibre which we've had soaking in the worm car, uh, the worm wee and the sea salt so that'll go, all go in there I'm keeping a bit back to um, use in the wicking basket or wicking cup in the global bucket so we'll just mix all this around in here
small shovel, please, Kira. Oh, that massive one will do, yep. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, back breaking work, this. A few little cameras run out of space on the card, so I've pulled out the big data. Um, anyway, we're planning them the same way Ray does on the Praxis channel. So they've been done like that from birth. Um, every time we repot them, we repot them as far up the stem as possible. With these guys, because we let them get a bit too big, because they're growing so strong this way, I'm not going to take it all the way up to the crown. Uh, I'm actually only going to take it up to this leaf. I'll take this leaf here off. Actually, I might take that one as well, depends on how high I mound it up. So, all you do is just pinch the leaves off. Might actually be a little bit more surgical than that. Take these ones off here, and then just fill around with the soil mix. Right, well that's the wicking tomato done. Um, with this one now, the um, global bucket, the wicking cradle or basket, um, just to help it suck the water up through the basket and into the main area, um, I thought I'd do a little bit of a mix. So the coconut fibre is actually the predominant makeup um, because it's very the organic mando is very good at wicking and holding water. So. What you do is, you fill up the basket and you compact it. This aids in the wicking action of the basket that draws it up to the center. I'm just going off what I've seen in other videos, so I'm fairly certain that that is correct. So that's in there firmly. And this here, try and get as much off as I can sits down into there. There we go. Now, we just fill around that. Every so often, pressing down just in the centre, just above where that cup is. Again, just to aid in the wicking action of the uh, medium. I've just been informed, I haven't done the reservoir. Reservoir is done. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. Pressing down again. Right now, right on top of that little divot goes the next Amish paste. Again, root bound like the other one. We left it too long between transplants, unfortunately. So I think he's actually a bit too high. So we might take some of this out. There we go, that looks a bit better. So he goes in on top there. And we shall surgically remove some leaves. This guy's actually going to um, sit a bit higher than the other one, I think. I'll take this set of branch and leaf off anyway. And I might leave... How high are we going to go? Uh, I'll leave him on for now. He might come off in a minute. So, start filling in around him. Nip him off and we'll just cover the base around like this. This is mainly just to um, keep the moisture Keep the moisture in, correct Maya, and also to um, inhibit any weed growth that may occur from the composted manures. I've just mixed through a bit of the um, mix in the hole, it's a bit hard to see, and I'm putting two in here, a um, little bit root bound as you can see. So they'll be going down nice and neat. I'm just going to backfill from the soil that came from here. They'll be sitting on some nice stuff. So this soil's already had composted horse manure through it. Big rocks. Um, plus raw horse manure was put in when the bed was first dug over. Unfortunately, I didn't cardboard mulch the, bo the bottom of the bed, the base of the bed. So we're getting a lot of weeds come through. Like them. That's them, Jim. That's them. Um, 
So we're getting a lot of weeds come through. Not only that, um, the horse manure has brought through weeds as well, but too late to do anything about that. I'll just have to do the mulching over the top to see if we can stop the weeds. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but the buckets have been leveled off. Um, the one thing I will give the um, global bucket, very quick to fill. The wicking bucket is heavier because of the extra um, medium down the bottom, the sand, and also it takes a while for the uh, water to filter through to the sand down the bottom, so global bucket is faster to operate. And if you just bear with us... There layer. we go, it's leaking. Yep, cool. There we go, that's it. Just going to mulch the bed now, try and get rid of some of these weeds with mulch. That's the global bucket and that's the wicking bucket and I've mulched there, that's the other tomato. Bit of an experiment, see how it goes. Have a good one.